Hey everyone, Adrian Graham here, product designer for Bifrost. And I want to go in depth to uh, one of the posts that one of my colleagues went through a while ago about uh, guided simulation. And you'll see here, open it up in YouTube, um, it's Daryl Obert going through uh, some of the uh, an overview of guided simulation and how to use a, a deforming surface such as this to uh, generate liquid simulations that very closely follow the mesh. Um, and that's what guided simulation is all about. It's, um, if you're familiar with accelerators, they don't do quite the same thing because guided simulation allows you to basically warp the space. I know that's I'm blowing your minds here, but it's going to warp the space uh, of the, uh, the velocity field in order to drive the particles in the direction that you want them to go. So here, for example, let me mute this. Here, for example, is... Uh, uh, an example that uh, Igor Zanuck has put together. And this shows some of the different settings that guided simulation can provide. So this is all driven by uh, a deforming surface. And uh, there are many different ways you can create this, uh, one of which is using an ocean deformer. And um, there's many ways to, use, to create ocean deformers. Uh, there's some for Maya. There's some for other applications. Uh, you could just uh, go online and... Uh, uh, just Google uh, Ocean Deformer for Maya and you'll find some stuff. But um, I'll also attach a, a sample file uh, of an ocean, a deforming ocean alembic here. So I am using an alembic file. So let's uh, bring that in. And I'm going to go alembic cache. And I'm going to import the alembic. And it's just this ocean anim here. It's 70 megs. All right, it's pretty small. If I hit play, it's 120 frames. And um, what's... Uh, Something to note about uh, ocean uh, meshes generated with the Ocean Toolkit is if I look from above, you'll see the uh, the verts of this geometry are deformed in all three axes. Now, at first, uh, I tried uh, doing this with a, a piece of geometry def deformed with the Maya's new texture deformer, which is totally awesome, um, by the way. Uh, and I could show you what I mean here. Uh, but... Um, Oh, let me just uh, scale this up over here and try to do something similar. I'll just do like 100 by uh, 40 or something like that. So if I deform this by uh, going to modeling, deform, texture deformer, and I'm going to deform it based on the normal. And I'll just give it uh, what some people have been using is an ocean deformer. Now... Um, what we need to do is uh, we need to increase the wave height and go up here and do something like that. And obviously, it's going in the wrong direction. Uh, but I'm just getting to the point where I'm going to show you the wind speed 0 and 1. Uh, I need to rotate the uh, I need to rotate the UVs, but let's not worry about that. So uh, if I set the time to equals time or something like that, um, it's going a different direction. But if I look from the top view, look what's happening. My verts are only moving in the uh, X, Z plane, whereas with the ocean deformer, they were moving in all three planes. So this is very important for uh, driving the velocity field. Even though the ocean deformer may look pretty good here, it's not going to move the particles in the way that we want, the flip particles in the way that we want. So I'm going to delete that. Now, the next thing we need to know is that the Ocean Deformer only works, uh, currently only works with a volume, with an, a volume object driving it. So if I apply this uh, uh, to, uh, sorry, not the Ocean Deformer, the uh, Guided Sim only works with a volume. So um, this is a flat plane. Uh, it's only, uh, it has no thickness. So we need to add some thickness to it. And uh, the easiest way to do that is to just extrude it. So I'm just going to click the Extrude tool, and I'm going to, go into world space mode and just slide this down uh, maybe till it's that deep. I want to uh, make sure that it's a little bit deeper than my whole, the pool, the tank that's going to contain this. So don't worry about the, the funky uh, lighting on the outside. We don't, we don't care about that. And we set this to two-sided lighting. And, um, yeah, we don't really want to worry about that because uh, this only the surface is going to drive this, and it's really only in the movement. The normals don't have any effect although I am getting some interesting effects with double-sided lighting. So, of course, like any other Bifrost simulation, we need to create a tank to hold this. So I'm going to create a tank that... Um, now, the walls need to be uh, a little uh, extra thick for 
um, for guided sims uh, in order for stuff to not fall through. I don't need them that thick though. So let's do something like that. And we're going to give it height. And we're going to look at the front view. So um, what's important is that the bottom, so we've got the bottom of the deformers doing the same thing as the top, but we don't really care uh, about the bottom right now. What we do care about is whether or not this tank is encompassing that bottom. So um, I'll explain in a second. What I'm going to do is select that face. I'm going to extrude that. Give that, let's look, oop, let's look at the uh, top view. And extrude that so it's inside the realm of, uh, of the boundaries of this. And I'm going to extrude this direction. So it's, it's contained entirely. And I'm going to extrude downward. So you've got this tank here. Now, the bottom of the tank needs to be above where this deforming stuff is going. So we could easily just do that. Uh, that's fairly deep. That's fine. Um, this, uh, let me just turn this off. That one, it could be that it, it does actually, well, yes, because it does need to encompass this because we're going to make, we're going to make this object an emitter and it needs to, this all needs to be cut out. So the thickness of the base of the bottom of it needs to be, uh, thick enough to encompass the, the, the base of this so that it kills all those particles. All right. So let's uh, save this guy uh, uh, in 2016, and uh, we'll call this our uh, right, simulation 02, prepend it with demo. I can post this to you guys when we're done. And um, so we're going to go back in FX mode, and we're going to go bifrost, create liquid. And you'll see there's uh, particles. I'm gonna Hide that guy. And I'm also going to set him to continuous emission off. We only need to emit once. Um, uh, I will also turn off the bounding box. And now I'm going to set this guy to be uh, the tank, to be a collider. All right, so it cuts all those guys out. Good. So we're almost there. Um, I'm going to go into the container and just uh, increase the resolution. Um, and the last thing we need to do, well, the second last thing we need to do is to select this, uh, the guide mesh, and then the liquid, and we're going to go bifrost, add guide. All right. So that doesn't do anything until you go under the liquid container and under guided simulation, enable it. There we go. So we immediately see something. Um, now, there's a couple different methods of guided simulation in Maya. Uh, in Bifrost, there are there's a simulation method which uses a low res simulation as a guide, and there's a mesh input which is what we're using. So uh, it doesn't matter whether simulation is on or off because we're not using it. I'm just going to turn it off. That's for another demo. Um, I also under adaptivity, I'm going to turn off spatial adaptivity uh, because it's not uh, we don't need it because we're going to have a very thin surface uh, of simulation here. Um, I'm also going to turn my time stepping down. One to three, just to make it a little bit faster. All right, so first off, um, I'm going to change my display to vorticity and remap the color. Uh, maybe I'll, I'm going to leave it 25 or something, and I'm just going to change this blue a little bit. Nicer blue. OK, so uh, do we have, uh, let's turn on uh, scratch cache so we can see the results here. Uh, all right, so I'm going to play forward a little bit, and we're not going to see much in the first few frames. Also, this is way too thick. There's too many particles, but uh, the whole point of guided simulation is to just have a surface of water, to just see uh, the surface of like a large ocean uh, area or something like that. So I'm going to go into the, the uh, guided simulation settings, and there's this min simulation depth that I can tweak. I'm going to reduce that to one. I'm going to have to rewind. And I'm going to see a much thinner surface. Now, I only have 37,000 particles, which is pretty low resolution. So now I can turn my resolution up by reducing my master, master voxel size. And now we see some dramatic differences here and some good contour going on. Um, one thing I might also want to do is you can see like a double surface. See most evidently in the most evident in the edges here. There's a double surface, and that's uh, under the emission attributes. That's under particle distribution. The surface particle density is set to 2 by default. 
So if we set that to one, you're going to see it uniformly throughout. Now, this is going to force me to up res my, um, uh, my simulation. Um, the thing is, surface particle density takes into account what it considers the top surface and the bottom surface. So uh, in future versions, we could probably fix that so that it recognizes the top surface as the top surface. I want to leave it like that for now. I just wanted people to understand why it's going to look thinner in the middle. If you also set the interior particle density to two, then it will be thick all the way through. But that's, again, the same thing as increasing our resolution. So let's leave it at one. And uh, because our scene is in meters, we're going to leave the scale at 9.8. Um, and we're pretty happy with that. All right, I'm going to save this before we go on to our next step, and that's going to we're going to bring in a uh, an interesting uh, element to our scene. We've got this animated boat that I'm going to bring in, and uh, it's been animated based on the uh, on this deforming surface. Um, turn to start loading back on. Um, I put a locator on top of the surface and just dragged it along and just get a rough animation there. You could also use like ocean surface and stuff like that. Uh, but you could animate your boat however you want. Now, what's important though is to make sure that the boat moves in a, a realistic type speed. Um, some of the tests that we did, some of the early tests, the boat accelerated like way too fast and the liquid just doesn't react in, in the correct way in that sense. You, uh, the, one of the boundaries, one of the restrictions of Bifrost is that um, it's uh, it's it's expecting um, real world numbers. It's it's if you give it real world, world numbers, it will provide you with a realistic simulation in return. I wouldn't say that's a limitation. I'd say that's one of the features of it. But um, uh, you know, you could push the boundaries of you know the speed of a boat, for example. But um, you would get some unrealistic or uh, unexpected results. You might, you might get some interesting results. I've had some experiences like that too. So anyways, let's make this boat. This boat is a single uh, mesh. Um, so it's uh, eligible to be uh, a solid. And I'm going to select the boat and the liquid and make it a collider. And I'm on frame one. I need to set it back to frame one. And the collision settings are all pretty normal. Uh, put it into, we should put it into solid mode and, um, um, you know, if you, uh, uh, if you want to visualize what this looks like as a solid, it's quite easy. So, um, you know, the, uh, the Bifrost, uh, shape has the ability, we know this, uh, we could view the tile view of the Bifrost shape. Let me set that to like six or something. So, um, the tile view shows the different resolutions of the, of the flip solver. Uh, there's eight resolution, uh, sorry, there's eight levels in the, in the tile, eight tiles, um, uh, zero through seven. And right here, we're looking at six and seven, six being red, and seven being blue. And if I actually hide, turn off the particle display, there you go. So just to show that they're blue, um, we could show only level seven. Um, now this is, this doesn't seem that important right now, but once we get into adaptivity and stuff, it does become important because the interior, the internal of some of the deeper sims that you're going to do are going to have a lower resolution. And that's what gives Bifrost uh, its speed and its, uh, its uh, intelligence and in that it will only uh, add resolution where it's needed. So we might say to ourselves, self, how would I use this tile, tile view to see what my, uh, how my colliders are uh, being uh, voxelized. So quite simply, in the node editor, which I'll drag over here, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, so we're going to go show the up and down stream on just the liquid container. And it's a bit of a mess here. Let's just tidy that up. So here's my liquid container. And I need to see my Bifrost shape, which uh, is over the liquid shape is over there. It's Oh, it's connected to time. That's why. Let me just remove time, and then it should lay out much nicer. Um, so if we hit select uh, the liquid container and the shape, and you hit 2, you'll see, as a matter of fact, here's a little trick. I just want to see these two guys. So I'm going to do select them, and then hit Shift and do an inverse selection, and hit the minus button here. And now we've got a nice, neat, isolated view of only things that we need. So What's going from uh, the, the container to the liquid shape is the liquid going to object. But if you hit three on the liquid container, you'll see all the other uh, outputs. 
And one thing to note is the solid output, that's what the colliders are. So if you just pipe the solid into the object and just overwrite that, and minimize that guy, and I will rewind. And now it should only show me, well, there's the colliders. Oh, if we forgot about all the other colliders. Uh, let me uh, set only level seven. And there's, the, uh, there's this collider, the tank. And I can actually turn off collision on that guy. And it's recomputing. OK. And what, are the, what else are the solids? Well, I guess the, um, the, uh, the guided surface is, a, uh, uh, is a, the guided mesh. So let's turn that off as well. And all that should be left is the boat. There you go. So this is how my boat is being, uh, the collision is being voxelized. Now, note that it's not um, this blocky. Uh, when the collisions happen, it's definitely not this blocky. That's, um, that is because it's showing the complete tiles. Um, right now, there's no way to show only the partial tiles. But uh, it's, what's going to happen is um, flip particles will enter into one of these tiles, and it will detect whether or not it's within a, a, the regional boundary of the collision uh, leaf or the voxel, and it will compute uh, a collision if, uh, if it's there. Um, if I change my conversion type to shell, you will get a much narrower um, uh, collision boundary. Um, the difference between solid and shell is, uh, well, solid is for uh, watertight, so-called watertight objects, objects that can be voxelized without any holes. But shell, uh, if you've got a single surface, for example, will uh, just do it, it will give you a, a, the ability to have a thickness. Now, right now, uh, the resolution isn't low enough, or it is, I, that is to say it's not high enough. The MVS isn't low enough to really make a difference here. So I'm going to leave this at solid. And that when, when conversion mode equals solid, thickness doesn't really matter. But what I am going to do is I can go into the liquid container. And this is a good, uh, a good trick. I can change the collision voxel scale to be smaller. And what that's going to do is it's going to increase the uh, MVS, or decrease, you can see it already happened, just for the colliders in my scene. So I can make, if I had a super detailed collision object like this boat, I can really crank down the voxel scale and get something hugs it much tighter and get a better result. Now, that possibly, I, I'm not sure with guide shapes, but um, with other, it's, that's the problem is this, this is across the board. So if I take my tank and I re-enable that as a collision, it's going to have this resolution as well. So something to be, uh, to be wary of. I, well, right now, in this sim that I've run before, we're not really having problems with, um, with collision uh, intersection. So I'm going to set my voxel scale back to 1. And I'm going to turn, I'm going to turn my uh, tank. Let's rename that to Tank Geo. I'm going to turn that back on. And I'm going to turn my uh, guided sim back on. And we'll go back to where we were. Got a simulation back on. And let's open our hypershade, hy sorry, uh, our node editor back up. Slip of the tongue there. Disconnect that, reconnect this guy. And it's just a display, so it doesn't need to recompute. There we go. We're back uh, displaying uh, tile view. We'll turn that off. We'll turn particles back on. OK. So uh, we know that this is a, coll a collider. We could see. The boat, uh, let me just make these particles a little fatter so you can see we make, see that the boat's sticking through there. And uh, let's go ahead and I'm going to run this sim. I'm just going to cache it to scratch cache. So I'll uh, turn on scratch cache, and I'm going uh, to hit uh, play. And uh, I'll come back once we've scratch cached it. All right, so we're back, and we've got a, a sim here. First off, it doesn't look very interesting because We've got our display uh, liquid shape vorticity set pretty low. Let's set that to five or something. We start to see some more interesting movements in the, in the liquids here. I think our resolution is a little too low because we're seeing a lot of holes go through. There's really only half a million particles. This should be a lot more, and I could scrub here if I want. Maybe make that two, and then pump that up a little bit or something like that. All right, so uh, we've got something here. Um, and we've got a little bit of a wake. I think that this should be deeper if we look from the top view. 
see a lot more interesting stuff here. And also, uh, I turned down the sub steps, and some of the stuff is moving pretty fast now. So I think maybe I should turn these uh, the adaptivity sub steps back up. I set this to one and three. I'll maybe change that to one and six or something. Um, but before we do all those recalculations, so so uh, we're happy with this. Uh, but there's a few things uh, changes I want to make. So I'm going to save this and. Um, when I, as soon as I make a change, the scratch cache is going to be wiped out, but that was fine. So I'm going to make this min simulation depth a little deeper. I'm going to make it two. Um, and that's going to, uh, first of all, yeah, wipe the scratch, and there it's going to make it deeper like that. And I can also, uh, I could reduce the resolution, or increase the resolution, reduce the MVS. Okay, I get a little bit of a, a weird wonky bug there. By the way, there's a, a slight bug that the the uh, the scratch cache looks like it's not wiped out, but it isn't. There we go. If we rewind again, it'll wipe itself out. Um, and now finally, let's add some uh, foam to these uh, to these waves. So I'm just going to go with the the container selected uh, bifrost add foam. And what that's going to do is well, it's going to wait a second. There we go go back to the container, the foam section is now enabled. And if you look under the Bifrost liquid, there's a foam uh, there's a foam shape. So now there's two shapes. Open the node editor back up and select him and just show outputs. Oop, let's do that. Clean that up. There we go. So now we see, you can ignore this mental rate user data. Uh, you can see there's a foam shape and a liquid shape. And the foam shape is pretty much the same as the liquid shape, only um, its uh, display type is set a little different under the hood. Uh, it only shows particles. There's no voxels. Because don't forget, we can also show on the liquid, we could show voxels as well as particles. If I turn voxels on and I, uh, oops, turn the voxel display to vorticity and set that the same to 2.5 and tweak the same color. So we'll get something similar. But um, I'm just going to deal with particles for now. And I'm going to select the foam particles. And I'm just going to increase those to three, display of three, turn off the bounding box. So now that we've got foam emitted, we need to figure out how to emit and um, and where to emit. Um, I should probably go into uh, foam detail in another blog post, because these controls, they're quite in-depth, and they take a little bit of practice getting used to. Um, and the units are not always totally clear. But um, uh, what we want to. Uh, think about is th these are the three main um, attributes for what will generate the foam. And that's speed, churn, and curvature. Uh, speed is, is pretty obvious, right? We, um, we know this the speed or the overall velocity of our liquid. We can actually visualize that by uh, selecting the liquid and viewing the color channel as velocity. And uh, right off the bat, you could see even on frame one, we get a little bit of velocity. Um, because the uh, the guided sim is taking into account the uh, the next frame. Um, scroll forward a little bit here, so we could see what we're what to be ex what, what we can expect. All right, so frame four, and this uh, uh, the 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 thing you got to remember about this uh, this deforming mesh is that it gets up to speed immediately. It doesn't ramp in like the boat. So the first few frames of this is, are going to be a run up. Maybe the first five or ten frames of this. Um, so if we go to the liquid and we maybe make that five, and I'm going to make this blue to red just so that we get a better idea. And then the middle, which is 0.5, I'm going to make that green just so that we can really differentiate what's going on here. So um, the highest velocities we're seeing are actually not red. They're, they're green, or the most of the high velocities. And we do actually see. Uh, a little bit of red, and that's way down here, and that's just barely touching the red. So I think five is probably the maximum, uh, the fastest uh, that this is going to go. So let's add some foam uh, emission, and we're going to look at the, the main parameters for foam emission and, and how to control them. There's a few tricks of the trade here that I want to show you guys. So I've lowered my uh, MVS to, uh, or raised it to 1 point, uh, 0 0.12. It was at 0 0.06, um, but just to get some faster feedback, I want to uh, I want to just turn that uh, the resolution down a bit. So um, I've also got my uh, color of the particles mapped to um, uh, not the foam shape, but the liquid. 
uh, I've got map to velocity, zero to one, and I've got a ramp, blue, green, red. Um, if I go, if I extend it to like 0.5 or something, I'll see some some different values there. But um, really, there's there's not uh, a whole lot of very high values in here. But I'm going to show you uh, how to control that. So it's uh, control foam emission. So one of the um, the tricks that I like to use is um, on the start frame as you make changes, uh, foam will emit, and you could you could see how the, the foam pattern is going to emit. Um, so I've re reduced the emission rate to 1,000. It was 5,000 before. I've increased the dissipation rate to 1,000. And if I set min liquid speed to zero, churn to zero, and curvature to zero, I'm going to emit everywhere. All right, so that means the threshold is zero. If it's greater than this value, if speed, churn, and curvature are greater than this value, emit. So we're going to see a whole mess of, uh, of foam particles emitted. And let's just let that finish computing. It's obviously emitting a lot. I think that was the, the churn, and now the curvature is doing that. There we go. So yeah, 8.1 mm, 8 million particles. That's way too many. So um, obviously, we need to trim that down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to think about the speed of the liquid here. I'm going to start with, uh, start with speed. And I've got the, the value remapped 0 to 1. Now, it's kind of an... Uh, uh, I wouldn't call it arbitrary, but it, we are dealing with uh, units per second divided by 24, which is my um, which is my frame rate right now. So uh, the number can correspond to a, a value within here. Um, so zero to one. So if I change my um, min liquid speed, first of all, let me unhide foam, and I'm going to change the min liquid speed to like uh, 0.2 or something. So this is going to say. Uh, valid candidates for emission will uh, will the uh, em the emission will be uh, switched on if the underlying liquid is 0.2 or greater. I mean, it ignores churn and curvature. Or just it's there's no think of these as three if statements. So if the value is greater than this, emit. If it's greater than this, emit. If it's greater than this, emit. And it's they're 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 not or they're not um, else. They're, they're, there's three if statements. Think of it like that. So if I toggle on and off the display of the foam, you can start to see what's going on, right? The areas that are green are the areas that are emitting, and they're the higher values. So let's say that's too much. Uh, if I want to turn down the emission based on speed, I'm going to turn up the min liquid speed. So it's I'm going to say the underlying liquid must be faster, a little bit faster, in order to emit. So the sweet spot is obviously between 0.2 and 0.3, because at 0.3, it's hardly emitting anything. Um, but that's fine, because I want to emit just from the crests of the waves, maybe do something like that. All right, now, um, what we can also, now, the, the, the workflow here is that you need to isolate them all. So um, let's go back to the liquid shape and set a velocity. We'll set vorticity, and it's going to be a much higher value. Now, the problem here is that we need to play forward a few frames for the, uh, for the, the vorticity to really show up. Oh, and we're emitting too much here. So we're on frame five, and we've got a min liquid speed of uh, point three. I thought that was zeroed out. But anyways, let's zero that. And like I said, it only uh, works on the start frame. So what we're going to do is we're going to change the. Ch oh, I wanted to see. I wanted to see what this looked like. So. Uh, 0 to 50 is too much. Let's go to 0 to 10 or something. So we're starting to see values. Make it a little larger so we can see something. And we're starting to see a lot of churn around the edge of the boat, and that's good. So we want to use that. So values closer to 10 are, um, are where the emission is going to happen. Now, churn is not the same as vorticity. And the churn values... Um, it's uh, the values are uh, units per second, um, and vorticity is not really that. So because I've also multiplied it quite a bit, um, uh, when I uh, first set up my vorticity, I turned the decay down and I turned the multiplier up by ten to a maximum of a thousand, and that's so I can get a wider range of uh, vorticity values just to visualize it. Um, so really, I think if we think of multi, you know, dividing it by ten. So I think a, a churn speed, or sorry, min liquid churn of one would work, but we're not going to see anything. First of all, we unhide the foam, but 
we also make our start frame, this frame, which is five, it's going to recompute. And okay, so we're not seeing, we're only seeing very, very little, small amounts of foam. Um, so obviously that value is too high. Let's turn that down and then make it sure in 0.5. And every time I hit enter, my procs do a little something. Um, I'm thinking that the vorticity values didn't really work properly because I'm not on frame one. And um, hmm, let me set this back to one and recompute. Sometimes you can't just, you just have to play through a few frames to actually see what the emission is going to do. So, so this is making sense. We're seeing emission around the boat. And in a couple of areas of higher vorticity, we're seeing it. I think I could probably increase it a little bit more. We hit escape. And if we isolate selected. Now, yes, you are seeing a lot of emission foam down at the bottom, but we can clip that um, later and so that we don't have to worry about it. Um, that's a bit of a, uh, so some of the problems with uh, guided simulation is that there are values being pushed into the liquid data on the underside. So um, we need to uh, take care of that. But that's not a big problem because, you know, we, we could trim that up. Um, so let's increase the, uh, the liquid churn to like 0.75. I have to rewind and hit play again. And we should see more emission. And already I see 32,000. Well, there's a lot on the bottom, so that's kind of... So what I did was I, I went in the opposite, the direction opposite of what I wanted to do. Because what I'm saying is the churn must be greater than this value. And I had 0.5 before. I'm going to set that to 0.25. So I'm going to open up the possible candidates for emitting based on the churn. So that's, that's looking good even after one or two frames. All right, so we're getting there. And so we've got speed and churn set up. Um, I'm going to put min liquid speed at uh, 0.2. Now, curvature is a little easier because it doesn't need to be simulated. To, uh, you can base it on, uh, on the first frame. But here, we're emitting based on speed and churn. And Obviously, the dissipation rate is a thousand, so these particles won't last more than one frame. Um, so that's not how they're going to behave. I just wanted to see where the emission's happening. So you have to take that into account with your emission rate and your dissipation rate. All right, so let's rewind to the first frame. I'm going to set, um, if I set these to zero, we're going to emit everywhere again. And I'm going to have to wait for the emission to happen the emission of 8 million particles. And then I'm going to set my curvature. If I set it to 1, this is, curvature is a value of 0 to 1. So high curvature indicates um, dramatic changes in the tangency of the surface, of the uh, isosurface. So you're going to get nothing. So maybe 0.5. So essentially, you can use a curvature emission if you, um, if you want to emit from the crests of waves or where there's a lot of detail, where there's a lot of uh, changes. So that's maybe reduce that 0.25. Okay. So we're seeing some interesting behavior there. And what we now need to deal with is the uh, min max liquid depth. Now, I think the default is three for max liquid depth. I'm going to reset this to default uh, and the max solid depth of one. So the um, the min max liquid depth is essentially telling Bifrost where you can emit, uh, sorry, how far under the level set, into the level set you can emit. Um, and I don't want to go in too far into depth 
uh, with these controls just yet. Um, I think that's for the next blog posting because that could be a whole half hour tutorial. But um, let's set our uh, liquid speed 2 and then 0.25, I believe, is the churn. And what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to do uh, this is a little trick because uh, I, I want to change a bunch of attributes, but I don't want to have to incur the hit every time I make a change. So I'm going to go to frame zero, and nothing will evaluate in frame zero because that's that's before the start frame. So dissipation rate was five. I'm going to reduce the kill density threshold to 0.3, and I'll explain how density works in a second. Leave the rest at default. Okay, so I think we're uh, almost ready and. Uh, I'm going to reduce the reduce the master voxel size, and I'm going to run a play blast, and we'll come back and look at it when uh, when it's done. Okay, so I ran a play blast, and we're uh, going to look at this in RV, and I stopped it after 70 something frames, 78 frames. Um, so we're, first things first, we're seeing a lot of popping in the emission. Um, all of it's happening around the boat. And there's a couple things that we need to talk about when we look at that. Um, that aside, there's some interesting movement going on behind the boat. That looks good. There's even a, a couple of very minor emissions happening here. So the uh, let's talk about that in a second. But let's address this popping first. And if I zoom in, we could see yeah, it's happening even before the collision happens. So this is a couple things. Number one, this is the boat collision um, uh, that's that's occurring uh, with the liquid, and that's causing the emission. Um, and I believe we reduced the uh, collision box. No, we didn't reduce the vo collision voxel scale. We experimented with that, but we didn't change it. So if I reduce that to 0.5 for my final sim, it'll it'll uh, reduce that. It'll fix that. Um, but one thing I want to show you. Let's hide the liquid is um so there's a lot of uh there's a lot of particles here 2.2 .2 million particles in the in the uh the foam um we are not looking at opacity so if i turn on opacity we're going to get a much nicer well i'm going to first of all defaults to none i'm going to set it to density i'm going to set the density ramp i think it defaults to 20 so i'm going to set that zero to two or something so we're going to get a much nicer behavior here and you'll see much less popping and more realistic so the way that density works is, uh, let me open another version of Maya. So let me open another version of Maya here. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and import. I've got a very simple, uh, as a matter of fact, on my shelf, my Bifrost shelf, oh, which isn't showing up here. That's right. Uh, So I'm going to open another version of Maya here. And I've just got a simple scene here with uh, some spheres to represent uh, water. And I'm just going to create a, select those guys and create a liquid and make sure that they are all uh, continuous emission off. Don't need those. I'm going to hide them. I'm going to make this guy collider. So very simple setup. And I'm also going to that on I like to turn that on and uh, so I'm just gonna add foam I'm gonna select the bifrost shape and I'm gonna add foam so if I just hit play oh I'm gonna make it a little faster by changing the gravity magnitude to 98 instead of 9.8 so it'll fall faster all right so let's 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 look at how the density for uh, foam works so if I take if I hide the liquid and uh, I zoom in and we only look at the, go to the uh, foam shape and we're going to, under numeric, I change this to density. And on the count, I could just turn this down to like 10 or something. So, and we'll make the point size larger so that we could see them. So you could sort of see me if we make that background black here or something. Um, I think it would make it even easier if we created a cube. Create a cube, and we'll use that template that. We'll use that as a clip. So 
we go to the liquid shape, we go clipping, and we select the P-cube, and we go back to the liquid shape, and we use selected. So we're just going to see what's inside the, uh, th that cross-section there. All right, so now when we select the foam, we can see the numbers, and we could even see um, some values here. So the, the, the deal with uh, how density works is pretty much, um, if you look at the, the surface of what's called a level set, um, particle emitted on the surface has a density value of 1. Um, as it is either born or thrust underneath the level set, within the level set, it gets a value of 1 plus the depth in voxels. So um, these numbers down here, because these guys are inside the level set, 2.8, 2.973, those are, uh, anything above 1 is essentially going to be underwater. And the higher the density, the more buoyancy has an effect. And buoyancy is a, obviously an attribute that is um, that you can set on your uh, on your foam uh, uh, settings here. Uh, buoyancy right here defaults to one. And of course, it uh, is the opposite of uh, gravity. So the stronger your gravity, the faster the buoyancy, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, now I said uh, anything on the surface is one, and then anything above the surface is going to be less than one, and then density dissipation takes effect. So what that means is um, as long as a particle uh, has a density value of greater than zero, which means it's still alive, uh, its density dissipation will take place every frame. So I know it's kind of hard to see. Let me turn the, uh, let me turn the, um, the bounding boxes off so we can see them. And the foam, turn that off. And we select the foam. So if I frame forward one at a time, like look at these the guys on top here, 0 0.512, 0 0.577, as they rise up, 478. It's hard to track them because you can't select any individual ones. But you'll see one, uh, particles that are thrust really far away from their their um, vertically get a, a lower and lower density value as they fall back to the level set they'll get a, a value that's approaching 1 when they hit the level set. So that means they can uh, bubble, uh, they can transition from being a foam particle to essentially a uh, ballistic uh, mist particle and then back to a bubble under the water and then back to a foam particle. Um, usually they don't last that long, but it all depends on what your dissipation values are. Um, so it's kind of hard to see. Let's rewind and let's... Oops, I had that. Selected. I was clicking the wrong one. Uh, so this all ties back to the dissipation rate, which is here, and the kill density threshold. So as a particle um, reduces uh, its density value, as it approaches this value, it, it's uh, it, it, sorry, as it hits this value or goes below it, it, it gets killed off. Um, so if you find you, uh, some foam particles popping off, you might want to lower this. Um, 0 0.05 is pretty low. Um, and that is also why we apply uh, opacity based on density. So if we go into the foam shape, we turn on opacity, we base it on density. So, and then we, uh, the, the default mapping, oops, sorry, that's numeric. Uh, the opacity channel remap. Let's go 0 to 2, for example. So the default mapping is 0 to 20. That's kind of off. Um, um, so you could see stuff that's way above the water. 0.295 is almost transparent. And of course, you can remap it to whatever color you want. I mean, and this is transparency, so it's a little bit, it's not opacity. Well, it is opacity, sorry, but um, it's, it's a 0 to 1 multiplier. So um, uh, mapping colors don't really have anything to do with it. Because you, uh, because it takes the value, so it should be black to white, which is what this is representing. Let's just get rid of the saturation. So mapping color is not going to help, but um, just gives you a general sense of what's going on. So if we go back to our, uh, let's go into uh, black background. Uh, if we go and we set our, yeah, we got our density remap zero to two, so we'll get a much nicer effect. So let's unhide this guy, or let's let's actually hide that guy, and and um, I'm going to uh, do a play blast here and have a look at what what the results are going to be.
So we've got a simulation here, uh, 64 frames with opacity, and it's better. I'm see, still seeing a lot of popping, but that stuff's happening underneath. Um, so if I were to um, turn the liquid on, let's set the liquid back to some sort of logical color, perhaps. Let's just uh, do something like that. We'll set to vorticity instead, and uh, maybe 20 or something like that. Now, um, uh, a little trick if you want to um, use your uh, use your scratch cache. Uh, unfortunately, Play Blast will wipe out your scratch if you run it from the start frame. So what I do is I just set start frame to two, and you'll never hit the start frame like this. So now I can just click Play Blast, and, and it'll go um, without wiping out my scratch cache. So it's still popping, and I think I uh, I know what we want to change here. Um, and let's go back to the let's go back to the uh, the foam emission parameters. Now these, like I was saying, it's um, they're um, they're like think of them as three if statements. Um, but the problem is they're more like um, and statements. So if min, this will emit only if min liquid speed is greater than 0.2 and min liquid churn is greater than 0.25 and min liquid curvature is greater than 0.25. So unfortunately, that's culling all of the nice individual properties that we had before. So you'll recall we were experimenting with min liquid speed, min liquid churn, uh, and curvature all separately, and we were getting nice results. But um, uh, the problem is when they're all added together, they don't give us ideal results. So usually, if you reduce them, um, you can uh, you can balance them properly. So um, I'm going to reduce min liquid curvature. I'm just going to make that zero because I don't want to have this crazy emission where there's high levels of curvature where the um, where the boat's hitting. Um, secondly, um, I think speed and churn. I'm going to turn churn down a little bit. Um, and finally, I'm going to go into the uh, collision voxel scale, set that down to 0.5, um, because I want the uh, collision to happen closer to the boat. Um, and we're already at 0.06, so I'm going to run a, uh, uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to call this uh, done for now, and I'm going to run a high-res simulation, and uh, we'll look at that when it's done. All right, so I've uh, done a play blast, and... Um, have a look at it. So 100% did the play blast in HD. If we actually look at it a little smaller, I, I made the uh, the liquid particles uh, two points in size and the foam particles one. And I'll show you what I'm doing there. So uh, it's not the best animation, obviously, and this is not the best simulation you've ever seen. But it gives us an idea of where we're going at the foam. And there's some really nice. Let's go back to 100%. Some really nice uh, behavior in the foam here uh, in the wake of the boat. Like looking at the sort of fingers of uh, the, uh, the 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 fingers of uh, velocity here, you get some really nice interactivity there. And um, I've made the point size of the of the liquid particles too uh, too large. They're set to a value of two instead of a default of one. Also, the viewport 2.0 inherently has issues with such um, fine and transparent. Um, elements uh, because the um, well let's look let's look at the file uh, what I did to get this to look like this so let's go to frame 125 this is all fully cached now um, and also by the um, this tutorial took me a while to, to go through and uh, and set up and get to look this way and um, I think a couple of the settings that you'll find in the example file that I'm that I've given uh, is uh, they they might be a little different from what you saw in the tutorial. And I, I think I ended up tweaking a couple things. Um, we're trying to read the uh, read the cache here. So on frame 125, yeah, you get some really nice a really nice look there. Now um, in uh, Maya 2016. Um, 
there's been some improvements in the transparency algorithm, and I think it defaults to object sorting. If you change it to that, you'll see a little, yeah, you see a little bit of a difference here, and it's, and that, it's although it's faster, it's based on the order of uh, the uh, creation order in the outliner. So unfortunately, in certain cases, you might see the liquid on top of the foam where it should be the other way around. Um, like it's not always ideal as to how it's sorted. Uh, uh, weighted averages, uh, sorry, depth peeling is is the more quote unquote advanced newer uh, method, although it is a tiny bit slower. Um, but here, you know, you're looking at 44 million particles, um, and I've got the um, transparency of the foam turned on. If I turn it off, I said opacity. If I turn it off, it's well, it's super fast, obviously, but uh, you get a lot of uh, a lot of nastiness in the way that it looks. Um, also, I've cranked up the max particle display count. Uh, I think it defaults to a million. So if you turn that down, you will see what is this one million. If you turn that down, you're going to get a, a you know not a very good representation of what's in your scene. There's 41 million foam particles here, and that's kind of what we're what you want to pay attention to. And that's the um, 2.8 million particles in the liquid. The the, the, the liquid is uh, is uh, you know a relatively low resolution, but then the foam is going to be much higher resolution, and that's going to give you more detail, a lot more detail. So let's make sure we set this to I'll set it to 100 million as a max, just so that I can um, see absolutely everything. But then when I turn on opacity, you'll see you'll see it's reduced to a much further extent, and it looks a lot better. But Look at that interactivity speed, 0.3 frames per second. Um, now, don't forget, this is a display count. So when you go to render this, whether it's Mental Ray or, or another software renderer of your choice, um, it's always going to render the maximum amount. So this is really only a preview amount. Um, so if we you know, turn this down to 10,000 or something, yeah, you're hardly going to see anything or do something like that. But when you go to software render it, it'll be totally uh, correctly uh, represented. So turn that back up. And what I did with the opacity is um, I'm multiplying it by the velocity, which, you know, it depends on what kind of sim you're doing. Um, I've had it where you base the opacity on the density. And like, you've, like I've said before, that's at max two, uh, particles that are under the liquid are going to be... Um, uh, they're going to be uh, a, a density of one plus their depth in world. Uh, I think in world space, and then uh, if they're right on the surface, they're going to have a density of exactly one. And then if, as they rise off the surface, their density reduces, and then eventually they get killed when they cross the threshold of uh, the um, uh, density threshold. But it gives you this very cotton ball-y look. Um, and that's kind of normal because that's how the, the density patterns and density diffusion and emission happen. So um, instead, velocity is a much nicer way of looking at it. But we've got to figure out what the max velocity is. We'll try like 30 or 40 or something. And you'll get a much nicer look. Yeah. Yeah. Way, not, way, way, way better compared to, the, uh, compared to uh, density visualization. So if you do that and background to black, you get an idea of what the pass is going to look like. But um, it's recommended that you, well, you, you kind of got to render these together because you want to see the li the, uh, the foam uh, underneath the, uh, the within the liquid uh, volume. Um, now, yeah, most people are going to want to mesh this. Um, uh, there's uh, some things that you can do to, to you can just render the ISO surface or the level set, but you don't have the same controls over the, the meshing quality just like you do here. Um, but um, there's still you know people are getting some pretty good results with meshing. Uh, but what you can do is uh, you're going to want to mesh this separately um, without even evaluating the foam or without even a foam object, and then bring that alembic in, and then um, uh, you're just going to want to read in the cache for just the foam, and then you'd render that. So this uh, tutorial is not about rendering, um, software rendering, that is. Uh, that's for another day. But um, hopefully this gave you an idea of, good idea of some of the workflows and some of the, the, uh, the, um, the, uh, the methods in which you can emit foam and, and, and sort of uh, pressure test your scene and, and get you to a point where it's predictable and, and um, 
and you uh, know what's going on under the hood so that you can have a successful simulation. Um, thanks for watching and uh, post any questions in the uh, in the thread here. Um, if you uh, if you want any uh, support files, I'll, I'll, I'll post this the final uh, support file of this, including the, uh, the the guide geometry. This guy here, um, and uh, I'll uh, let you guys uh, have that and and uh, do uh, give this a try yourself. So thanks a lot.